Hi, my name is Joe Jackson. I'm a journalist, author, interviewer and broadcaster who's interviewed over a 30-year period roughly 1,400 celebrities. I'm often asked who among them was my favourite interviewee, and I often say, among males, actor Richard Harris, who at one point asked me to write his official biography, and among females, Tori Amos. In 2010, I wrote for an Irish newspaper a fragment of memoir I called my Spirit Walk with Tori Amos. It's included in my ebook, Tori Amos Soul Searching and Uncensored, a title I took in part from the fact that in 1994, an interview we did was censored by the Irish Times. And when I say censored, I don't mean that sections were cut. I mean, I was told by one editor that they didn't want, quote, this woman in the newspaper at all particularly because of comments she made about having had sexual fantasies about Jesus Christ, and Tory's detailed description of the attempt she was making with her lover to reconnect with her own body after a rape experience. Incidentally, during the phone call you're about to hear, in which, looking back, I'm ashamed to say that I break my own lifelong rule as an interviewer and as a person and talk more than I listen at least at the start. I refer to that same editor telling me she looked forward to reading the rejected interview in The Sun. There, I'm referring to a tabloid newspaper. Although here I must say that my arts editor, Paddy Woodworth, whom I allude to during this discussion with Tory, was as pissed off as I was by the fact that she had been silenced in this sense by the newspaper. Tory had, after all, written a song called Silent All These Years. By the way, Tori Amos' Soul Searching and Uncensored is available wherever you buy your e-books. And if you want to read one of the interviews, check out my website, joejacksoninterviewer.com. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. It's okay they didn't want us. That's life. When you, you know, um, what is it? I don't know. <laughs> what does that say? When you jet lag? <laughs> no, you know, that's why the world's changing. I think it's a compliment. Take it as a compliment. Okay? We obviously got under their skin. That means something. Okay, so I'm not under my name. I never go under my name. But call Johnny and he'll connect you, you to me. Okay? Thanks for everything. We really want to try and work this Bill Miller thing out. Bye. Hi. Hi there. I'm broken hearted. I was broken spirited. I mean, I told you I was, I felt weak in the gut after writing the thing. Imagine the kick in the gut I got the next day when they said, take this away from here. You know? But three days has given me time to gather my emotions. Well, you know, it's powerful. That's why they did it. Ah, uh, yeah, but still, it doesn't matter. I've talked with some friends, a lot of friends about it, and they're really incensed. I mean, who know your work. And I've told them what we were talking about, and they just feel, why on earth should any woman be silenced talking at that level? So, and it was just insulting the way they did it. You know, it wasn't my regular arts editor. It was two other persons in the Irish Times took the uh, decision and just said that, you know, why does she want to talk to you like this? She should be going to therapy. <laughs> and I said, well, you know... <laughs> And they didn't like the Jesus stuff. But I knew this. But I didn't think... I thought, like I said to you, they'll say, maybe we'll have to cut that sentence or cut that concept. But this was just blanket dismissal of the whole piece. But you're right. I mean, we clearly got under the skin, but that to me is not enough. No, I see what you're saying. Well, you know, that's just, that's just so funny to me. It's just so funny because uh, that it's funny as in it's in beyond a comment. Right. Sure, sure. No, that's what I said. And I said if we can help even one reader who is quiet or silent about something similar to say, hey, this is what I feel, this is what I'm going through, I have to talk to someone about it. We've helped. But they really reveal themselves to be uh, just very kind of conservative and far more restricted than I thought. 
And one of the person in there who backs me all the way said, I see what you're trying to do and what she's trying to do, and I would back it, you know, push the barriers. Let's bring more out into the open. But you try, you've pushed them all too hard, too fast. You know what I mean? They can't, they can't go that far right now. Right. No, you see, I'm not giving them... I'm not going to... That was just a 2,000-word feature for the Times. I'm going to re... That's why, you know, I am tired living with you. Tell Eric to take you back. I've got to do the whole thing again. <laughs> so I started again this morning. I'm only kidding. You're a sweetheart to live with from a distance. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Uh, so this morning, I actually, I really was upset by it, and I'm glad I'm talking to you two and a half days later. So I couldn't even begin to look at it again until this morning. And I took it out and wrote a new introduction. And just I'm going to recontextualize the whole thing. You know what I mean? With all the resonances, like the fact that there was a conversation beforehand from which there will be parts drawn, but parts will be left out. The restaurant, the whole... So then when the Irish Times read it, they'll see the context they actually rejected. You know what I mean? I do. Well, that... Well, I mean, you know, come on. Yeah. People have got to push the boundaries here. Yeah. It's just too much control. Yeah. Too much religious control. Too much... And the other thing is... But that's a huge factor, Tori. You have to think of that. The religious conservatism, I told you they came down on me because I said something about Jesus Christ dominating the space on the lower body. That was deemed to be offensive. Right. So you have to think... That's probably the core issue for the religious conservatism here in Ireland. Well, in the, well, it just shows you why there's so much rage in all the music right now, because uh, for them to even say, why are you talking about this stuff? It's just, it's, there are no. two sides that are dividing up. Well, I also said, you know, they're always arguing that women are becoming more expressive in terms of painting, poetry, films, literature. So what are you saying? We'll open the doors to all that and we'll back it, but they can only say so much. Right. You know what I mean? And one real ethical irony is that you were deemed to be too disturbed to be talking on the arts page with me, right? Disturbed. But, I mean, they will happily take all that money from Sinead O'Connor, who writes a poem a letter in a poem form to readers to talk about how disturbed she is. You know what I mean? Right. So, I mean, the whole thing... Yeah, but that wasn't threatening to them. It was threatening to really expose um, the abusive side of things and how to heal. Yeah. That's threatening, especially to people who don't, who don't want to deal with it or look at it or, you know, or, or don't understand it. Yeah, but it's also totally subversive because you're saying, and you, I left that phrase in where you say even talking is part of a healing process to me. Because we're basically saying, and the context is, I can do this without the patriarchal power structure that is the church. In fact, I'm doing it because I reject that. Right. When you say that in Ireland, you're getting down to the nub of the political, psychological mindset. Right. So you're saying, I can do without everything that Ireland has built its state upon. You know, which is kind of a big statement, Tori, don't you think? Okay, yes, a big statement. I'm not going to get shot if I come. <laughs> yeah, no. No, I mean, I was really looking forward to uh, the responses to it, you know. But anyway, I mean, it, it'll be out Thursday week in its entirety, the unexpurgated text. Well, I'm sure it'll get circulated. Oh, I know that. Well, it's good. The funny part is probably other newspapers will pick up on it and then the Irish towns will feel like white fools because they'll know. And the times will be left so far behind that they won't be able to do that. But I, it's going to work out in the end, Joe. I mean, look, we had to talk the way we talked because it was honest, and it just came out that way. And if people aren't ready to be open to that, then we'll go to a place where they are. And I know it hurt you because you have to live in it. It's easy for me to say because I'm in Boston now, and I'm, you know what I mean? Sure. I'm not in the thick of it like you are, but you are a pioneer. I do, yeah, 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 yeah. But it was no because to me it was hurtful too because we, what we were presenting was so essential, as in the essence of a woman, the essence of a person, yes. and when the essence to me that's why. My editor stopped around. It's actually good. I made My editor ran after me in the street, the guy who had been out the day he should have been in to fight my case. 
and he had a, rec a CD bag in his hand, and I knew what was in it. Right? He'd just been into the Virgin Megastore, and you know what he'd bought. What? Under the pink. All right. And I said, no, you have to go and buy Little Earthquakes too. Because he wants to go in and fight a case. He can't get them to change their minds, but he's so angry about this censorship. So he's going to be listening to your music all weekend with his girlfriend to be fully prepared for this battle tomorrow morning. So obviously it's ongoing. You know? Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. So it's more uh, that idea of the... S I was afraid that you might think, well, if they want to depict me as sexy chick or weird chick, they don't reject that. But when I present my, the essence of myself, they do reject it. And I was afraid that might hurt you. Well, in the case, you say we've been rejected. I no, can't. I can't. Yeah. Tori, I love I you. Know. I'm not going to lose my job for you. No, 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 no. You're a sweetheart and all that stuff, but come on. Yeah, you, you, you don't need another uh, press assistant or anything there, would you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get it, I get it. The good thing is that it will have the whole thing. No, I mean, what I've done is very subtle, and you'll know what I'm saying. I'm saying that there will be people who will respond a certain way to what follows in this interview. Right. Which is as close as I can get to slapping the face of uh, a particular woman, which it was a woman that really angered me that she said... This is just a woman rambling on about things like Jesus and masturbation and her rape. You know, we don't want this kind of stuff in the paper. Right? <laughs> and then yesterday when I was in the office, I was walking by and she said, uh, I had to replace you very quickly. I had this what nearly killed me too. I had seven hours to re replace the interview. So I got an interview with Lee Von Helm, the band. And she shouted across the office, thank you for getting that so quickly. I'll read the other one in the sun. Isn't that disgusting? So my editor heard that, the other guy, and he said he was going to stand up in the office and say, look, it's bad enough you're rejecting the woman and the guy's work. What kind of crap is that? So we've obviously really shaken them. Yeah, I know. She's sold you. She had the de she had the decisive she had the decisive vo uh, vote, and she uh, silenced you. Yeah, she, she did. She silenced all women. She didn't just silence me. I know. I know. She silenced all women that have gone through that. That she has just said, as a woman, I'm not going to be silenced. Yeah. Because I'm not going to be silenced. Yeah. I did say that to her. I said, you know, uh, she, she, she. Uh, what the irony is, she used to edit the quote woman's pages. So I said, you know, for years you've been writing about woman, and I said, and here is a woman talking about an experience that is central to woman, and you don't want to present that. I see no logic in that. You know what I mean? And uh, she didn't like that at all because I'm only a boy on the block, you know, I'm only there a year and a half. She's been there 15 years. Yeah. But uh, I would have to say that, you know, and I'm, you know, if I get in trouble over it. I don't know. But it's also me. It is you being censored, but it's also I'm the carrier of this disease. You know what I mean? Sure. But wash your hands of her and don't let the disease in because let your editor fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? If he wants to, and if not, let the piece speak for itself because it really does. I mm. mean, I know it in my being. It speaks for itself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what that's what strong work does. People hate it. People love it because it, it goes beyond the work. It calls things up in themselves. 
Sure. So a lot of times they'll attack you before they'll look at themselves. That's just the way they are. Sure. Okay, well, I'm going to have fun now. I have what, two and a half hours tape to get. I think I'll just take over the whole issue of Tory Press. Wouldn't that be a nice slap in the face? Tory Press and cover colour. I'd love it. <laughs> well, I'm sorry you had to go through that. No, it's a good experience for me because, you know, I realise what kind of state I live in. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I realise despite all these gestures towards liberalism and opening of doors and all that stuff, that I'm still living in Ireland, basically. You know? I'm still living and working under the shadow of the church and conservative powers, you know. But still, I've been pushing it in other ways, and I know, you know, I, I have pushed the boundaries as far as I can go. Maybe if you and I did it in another couple of years, they wouldn't have stopped me. And I really do think that after they see it in print and even hear the response to it, they realize they fucked up, basically, that she fucked up with that decision. Well, you know, I honestly do feel that. Of course I will. Of course I will. So are, you, so are you all right? We have a shrine here for you and Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not alone. And it's called the home of the Irish here. I know. Liberal Irish. Yeah, the Kennedys and all that. That clan. Now, we're trying everything we can to get the Bill Miller thing happening, so... Well, I just gave the contact number that I had. Yeah, and my his office. John, he, he wants to give you another number. All right. Okay, so big hug, Joe. Have you been eating and sleeping? Uh, no, but I'm going to go eat Come something on. right now. You sound better. You sound better than you did the night we... All right, good. Okay. All right, then. Reciprocal. Okay. All right. Stay in touch. Hi, Joe Jackson here again. I thank you for listening to this edition of the Joe Jackson Interviews podcast. And don't forget, if you want to read the anthology of all my interviews with Tori Amos, check out Tori Amos, Still Searching and Uncensored at Amazon. Apple iBooks, Barnes & Noble, and so on.